Hello, hello, how are you? I am Michelle Deline and I am here with you today to discuss a very important topic, the Hippocratic Oath and yoga. What? What is this? Oh my gosh, are you ready? We're blending Western and Eastern medicine, philosophy, discussion, healing. Let's get started. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. Okay, so let's be real here. Most of us as practitioners in allopathic medicine have taken this Hippocratic Oath, okay? Uh, We have sworn to first do no harm, right? And in yoga, this is also one of the... We call it a, uh, a limb of yoga, the yamas and the niyamas. They're kind of like the Ten Commandments, if you want to like get all like religious and such in comparison. But honestly, it comes down to it's all the same. It really is all part of this deeper meaning of self-love, of showing up every day as your true, most authentic self and promising to provide your service of healing to your patients, to your clients, to you, to your family, and to your friends, and, and doing so through the cultivation of self-love practices, right? And it all starts with recognizing the love for yourself and then filling yourself, filling your cup, so to speak, and being able to pour that out so that you could serve others. Because like when you get on an airplane, they always prepare you mom, you put your oxygen mask on first and then you put it on whoever needs help around you. Same goes with first do no harm, right? The Hippocratic Oath and yoga. You must step away from the victimhood of self-sabotage in order to truly align with your divine worth, okay? And as a allopathic provider, we are so well trained to be fearful, to think negatively, to literally Give yourself, sacrifice yourself to your workplace, to your patients, to your family, to everyone around you that needs you so very much, we start to neglect ourselves, right? So I'm here today to remind you to love yourself, to first do no harm to you. And so let's start. This is actually from the History of Medicine Division, the National Library of Medicine and National Institutes of Health. I just pulled up the Greek Medicinal Hippocratic Oath, and here it goes. Are you ready? And um, this is actually like the National Institute of Health.gov. So that's my source. That's where I'm getting it from. I swear by Apollo, the physician, and Asclepius, 
and Hygieia and Panacea and all the gods and goddesses as my witnesses that according to my ability and judgment, I will keep this oath and this contract to hold him who taught me this art equally dear to me as my parents to be a partner in life with him and to fulfill his needs when required to look upon his offspring as equals to my own siblings and to teach them this art if they shall wish to learn it without fee or contract and that by the set rules, lectures, and every other mode of instruction, I will impart a knowledge of the art to my own sons and those of my teachers and to students bound by this contract and having sworn this oath to the law of medicine, but to no others. I will use those dietary regimens which will benefit my patients according to my greatest ability and judgment, and I will do no harm or injustice to them. I will not give a lethal drug to anyone if I am asked, nor will I advise such a plan. And similarly, I will not give a woman a pessary to cause an abortion. In purity and according to divine law, will I carry out my life and my art. In purity and according to divine law, will I carry out my life and my art. Just take a moment and reflect. What is in alignment with your divine life? What is your divine art? Have you always dreamed of showing up to heal others? That is your destiny. That is your purpose. And maybe you're learning the Hippocratic Oath today to step into the power of healing others. Maybe it's not as something you've always thought of it to be. For me, I thought I wanted to become a neurosurgeon. I went to school, I fell in love, absolute love with neurology. In 10th grade, I remember learning about the nervous system and when I stepped up in front of the class and I created this beautiful presentation and I talked about the synapses and neurotransmitters and this beautiful play of sodium and potassium and chloride channels and how everything so perfectly moves and describing the neuroanatomy and neuropathophysiology of the nervous system. It literally just poured out of me. And what I didn't realize at the time was it was because I was very much aligned with my true self. I decided, oh, and let me tell you, I was quite nervous. I decided to step out of fear and kind of face the demons of all of these negative, you know, ideas and things just bubbling up for me. And I just put them to the side and I took a deep breath and I was very anxious, but don't worry because that just means that you care so very much. 
And I stepped into my self-worth and I got on stage and I showed them this most beautiful PowerPoint of the nervous system. And I walked through all these different videos and, and everything. And guess what? The entire classroom just stood up and applauded me. And this was completely unexpected. My teacher, um, Professor Coley or Miss Coley, Dr. Coley, I can't remember. She was absolutely amazing. This um, beautiful African-American woman just with a very strong voice and just incredibly empowering. She, she, I could see it. She was just so proud of me. And it was at that moment in time that I aligned with my divinity. And that was one of one of my discoveries of self-service and how being altruistic by facing my fears, by getting up, by doing no harm. And for me, that meant to step out of victimhood, to allow myself to grow and to change by strengthening my voice, by facing the paralyzing fear of public speaking and, you know, thoughts of what others would potentially judge me or, you know, how they would treat me or so-and-so. I let all of that kind of go and I stepped up into this beautiful self-love embodying practice of this public speaker. And that was one of the first steps that I took in order to really break the chains of the self-limiting mindset of maybe nobody wants to hear what I have to say or Am I really good enough to do this? Let me tell you right now, you are good enough. People want to hear what you have to say. And it all comes back to ahimsa in yoga, which means first do no harm. That self-love, it all comes from your heart. As long as you speak truthfully, and with good intention, and it comes from a place where you are incredibly passionate. It's something that is within your heart that you've always desired to share, and you are exactly where you need to be. Right now, right here, in this time. When you are destined for greatness. Your fears, they can seem exceptionally overburdening, quite limiting. Your fears could be great too, but you have the power to choose to step out of those paralyzing fears into something strengthening, into something that will completely transform you, uplift you, inspire you, make you grow. And I encourage you to do that today. There is a greater meaning to life that is waiting to be discovered. It lies within you. It lies within me. It lies within your neighbor. It lies in everyone you meet. And by showing up and being that being of light, you illuminate those around you. Have you ever heard how it just takes one candle to light all a 
was the other candles waiting to be lit around that one candle. It doesn't take anything else other than courage. Step up, provide your service, your gifts to the world. We all enter medicine with the intention to heal others. And sometimes we can get quite lost and our cup can feel quite empty. And it's hard to pour from an empty cup. And a great man, a great teacher once told me, I cheers you, but my cup is empty. So make sure before you toast to a new beginning, make sure your cup has something in it, preferably full. <laughs> we all will learn that our preferences could be limiting, but that's for another time. I am Michelle Deline. I am a certified physician assistant. I am a lifestyle coach. I am a mom. I am an entrepreneur. I have big dreams to heal the healers of the world, and that starts with you, allopathic providers. So today, decide to step up into your self-worth and first do no harm. I have faith in you, and I love you with love and light, divine protection, illumination, raise our thumbs to our third eye, the seat of our intuition. We bow our intellect to our hearts and together we say, Namaste.